Herat. Herat, Persian slash Pashto, is the third largest city of Afghanistan. It has a population of about 436,300, and serves as the capital of Herat province, situated in the fertile valley of the Hari River in the western part of the country. It is linked with Kandahar, Kabul, and Mazar-i-Sharif via Highway 1 or the Ring Road. It is further linked to the city of Mashhad in neighboring Iran through the border town of Islamala, and to Mary in Turkmenistan to the north through the border town of Torgandi. Herat dates back to the Avestan times and was traditionally known for its wine. The city has a number of historic sites, including the Herat Citadel and the Musala Complex. During the Middle Ages Herat became one of the important cities of Khorasan, as it was known as the Pearl of Khorasan. It has been governed by various Afghan rulers since the early 18th century. In 1717, the city was invaded by the Hataki forces until they were expelled by the Afsharids in 1729. After Nader Shah's death and Ahmad Shah Durrani's rise to power in 1747, Herat became part of Afghanistan. It witnessed some political disturbances and military invasions during the early half of the 19th century, but the 1857 Treaty of Paris ended hostilities of the Anglo Persian War. Herat lies on the ancient trade routes of the Middle East, Central, and South Asia, and today is a regional hub in western Afghanistan. The roads from Herat to Iran, Turkmenistan, and other parts of Afghanistan are still strategically important. As the gateway to Iran, it collects high amount of customs revenue for Afghanistan. It also has an international airport. The city has high residential density clustered around the core of the city. However, vacant plots account for a higher percentage of the city, 21%, than residential land use, 18%, and agricultural is the largest percentage of total land use, 36%. Today the city is considered to be relatively safe. Herat dates back to ancient times, its exact age remains unknown. During the period of the Achaemenid Empire, ca. 550-330 BC, the surrounding district was known as Hareva, in Old Persian, and in classical sources the region was correspondingly known as Arya, Arya. In the Zoroastrian Avesta, the district is mentioned as Haroeva. The name of the district and its main town is derived from that of the chief river of the region, the Hiri River, Old Dari Hararud, Silken Water, which traverses the district and passes some south of modern Herat. Hiri is mentioned in Sanskrit as yellow or golden color equivalent to Persian Sard meaning gold, yellow. The naming of the region and its principal town after the main river is a common feature in this part of the world, compare the adjoining districts slash rivers slash towns of Arrakisia and Bactria. The district Arya of the Achaemenid Empire is mentioned in the provincial lists that are included in various royal inscriptions, for instance, in the Behist Hun inscription of Darius I, ca. 520 BC. Representatives from the district are depicted in reliefs, for example, at the royal Achaemenid tombs of Nakshirostam and Persepolis. They are wearing Scythian style dress, with a tunic and trousers tucked into high boots, and a twisted bashlik that covers their head, chin, and neck. Hamd al Mustafi, composer of the 14th century work The Geographical Part of the Nuzat al Club, writes that Herodotus described Herat as the breadbasket of Central Asia. At the time of Alexander the Great in 330 BC, Arya was obviously an important district. It was administered by a satrap called Satabarzans, who was one of the three main Persian officials in the east of the empire, together with the satrap Bessus of Bactria and Barsins of Arrakisia. In late 330 BC, Alexander captured the Aryan capital that was called Artako Anadot. The town was rebuilt and the citadel was constructed. Afghanistan became part of the Seleucid Empire after Alexander died. Most sources suggest that Herat was predominantly Zoroastrian in the pre Islamic period. It became part of the Parthian Empire in 167 BC. In the Sasanian period, 226 to 652, Harav is listed in an inscription on the Kaaba Isartasht at Naqshirastam and Hari is mentioned in the Pahlavi catalogue of the provincial capitals of the empire. In around 430, the town is also listed as having a Christian community, with a Nestorian bishop. In the last two centuries of Sasanian rule, Arya, Herat, had great strategic importance in the endless wars between the Sasanians, the Chinites and the Hephthalites who had been settled in the northern section of Afghanistan since the late 4th century. At the time of the Arab invasion in the middle of the 7th century, 
the Sasanian central power seemed already largely nominal in the province in contrast with the role of the Hephthalites tribal lords, who were settled in the Herat region and in the neighboring districts, mainly in pastoral Bodgis and in Kohistan. It must be underlined, however, that Herat remained one of the three Sasanian mint centers in the east, the other two being Balsh and marked out the Hephthalites from Herat and some unidentified Turks opposed the Arab forces in a battle of Kohistan in 651-52 AD trying to block their advance on Nishapur, but they were defeated. When the Arab armies appeared in Khorasan in the 650s AD, Herat was counted among the twelve capital towns of the Sasanian Empire. The Arab army under the general command of Anath ibn Qais in its conquest of Khorasan in 652 seems to have avoided Herat, but it can be assumed that the city eventually submitted to the Arabs, since shortly afterwards an Arab governor is mentioned there. A treaty was drawn in which the regions of Bodgis and Bushanhor were included. As did many other places in Khorasan, Herat rebelled and had to be reconquered several times. Another power that was active in the area in the 650s was Tang Dynasty China which had embarked on a campaign that culminated in the conquest of the Western Turks. By 659 to 661, the Tang claimed a tenuous suzerainty over Herat the westernmost point of Chinese power in its long history. This hold however would be ephemeral with local Turkish tribes rising in rebellion in 665 and driving out the Tang. In 702 AD Zid ibn al-Mahalab defeated certain Arab rebels, followers of Ibn al-Ashith, and forced them out of Herat. The city was the scene of conflicts between different groups of Muslims and Arab tribes in the disorders leading to the establishment of the Abbasid Caliphate. Herat was also a center of the followers of Ustatsis. In 870 AD, Yagud ibn Laith Safari, a local ruler of the Safarid dynasty conquered Herat and the rest of the nearby regions in the name of Islam. The region of Herat was under the rule of King Nu III, the seventh of the Samanid line, at the time of Sabuk Tigan and his older son, Mahmud of Ghazni. The governor of Herat was a noble by the name of Faik, who was appointed by Nu III. It is said that Faik was a powerful, but insubordinate governor of Nu Iv, and had been punished by Nu III. Fake made overtures to Bagra Khan and Uwar Khan of Khorasan. Bagra Khan answered Fake's call, came to Herat and became its ruler. The Samanids fled, betrayed at the hands of Fake to whom the defense of Herat had been entrusted by Nu Three in 994. Nu Three invited Alp Tigan to come to his aid. Alp Tigan, along with Mahmud of Ghazni, defeated Fake and annexed Herat, Nishapur, and Tu. Herat was a great trading center strategically located on trade routes from Mediterranean to India or to China. The city was noted for its textiles during the Abbasid Caliphate, according to many references by geographers. Herat also had many learned sons such as Ansari. The city is described by Astakri and Ibn Hakal in the 10th century as a prosperous town surrounded by strong walls with plenty of water sources, extensive suburbs, an inner citadel, a congregational mosque, and four gates each gate opening to a thriving marketplace. The government building was outside the city at a distance of about a mile in a place called Khorazabad. A church was still visible in the countryside northeast of the town on the road to Balsh, and farther away on a hilltop stood a flourishing fire temple, called Sureshk, or Arshak according to Mustafi. Herat was a part of the Tahira dominion in Khorasan until the rise of the Safarids in Sistan under Yagubai Lith in 861, who, in 862, started launching raids in Herat before besieging and capturing it on 16th of August 867, and again in 872. The Safarids succeeded in expelling the Tahirids from Khorasan in 873. The Samanid dynasty was established in Transoxiana by three brothers, Nu, Yahya, and Ahmad. Ahmad Samani opened the way for the Samanid dynasty to the conquest of Khorasan, including Herat, which they were to rule for one century. The centralized Samanid administration served as a model for later dynasties. The Samanid power was destroyed in 999 by the Karakanids, who were advancing on Transoxiana from the northeast, and by the Ghats Navids, former Samanid retainers, attacking from the southeast. Sultan Mahmud of Ghazni officially took control of Khorasan in 998. Herat was one of the six Ghats Navid mints in the region. In 1040, Herat was captured by the Seljuk Empire. Yet, in 1175, it was captured by the Gurids of Gore and then came under the Ka'urasm Empire in 1214. According to the account of Mustafi, Herat flourished especially under the Gurid dynasty in the 12th century. Mustafi reported that there were 359 colleges in Herat, 
12,000 shops all fully occupied, 6,000 bathhouses, besides caravanserais and mills, also a Darwish convent and a fire temple. There were about 444,000 houses occupied by a settled population. The men were described as warlike and carry arms, and they were Sunni Muslims. The Great Mosque of Herat was built by Giyazad Din Ghori in 1201. In this period, Herat became an important center for the production of metal goods, especially in bronze, often decorated with elaborate inlays and precious metals. Herat was invaded and destroyed by Genghis Khan's Mongol army in 1221. The city was destroyed a second time and remained in ruins from 1222 to about 1236. In 1244 a local prince Shams al-Din Kart was named ruler of Herat by the Mongol governor of Khorasan and in 1255 he was confirmed in his rule by the founder of the Ilkhan dynasty Halaku. Shams al-Din founded a new dynasty and his successors, especially Fakr al-Din and Giyat al-Din, built many mosques and other buildings. The members of this dynasty were great patrons of literature and the arts. By this time, Herat became known as the Pearl of Khorasan. Timur took Herat in 1380 and he brought the Karadid dynasty to an end a few years later. The city reached its greatest glory under the Timurid princes, especially Sultan Hussein Baykar, who ruled Herat from 1469 until May 4, 1506. His chief minister, the poet and author in Persian and Turkish, Mir Ali Sher Navai, was a great builder and patron of the arts. Under the Timurids, Herat assumed the role of the main capital of an empire that extended in the west as far as central Persia. As the capital of the Timurid Empire, it boasted many fine religious buildings and was famous for its sumptuous court life and musical performance and its tradition of miniature paintings. On the whole, the period was one of relative stability, prosperity, and development of economy and cultural activities. It began with the nomination of Sharog, the youngest son of Timur. As governor of Herat in 1397. The reign of Sharok in Herat was marked by intense royal patronage, building activities, and promotion of manufacturing and trade, especially through the restoration and enlargement of the Herat's Bazaar. The present Musala complex, and many buildings such as the Madrasa of Kaharshad, Ali Shir Mahal, many gardens, and others, date from this time. The village of Bazarga, over 2 km northeast of Herat, contained a shrine which was enlarged and embellished under the Timurids. The tomb of the poet and mystic Khwaja Abdullah Ansari, d. 1088, was first rebuilt by Sharok about 1425, and other famous men were buried in the shrine area. Herat was shortly captured by Karakoyunlu between 1458 to 1459. In 1507 Herat was occupied by the Uzbeks but after much fighting the city was taken by Shah Ismail the founder of the Safavid dynasty, in 1510 and the Shamlu Kazilbash assumed the governorship of the area. Under the Safavids, Herat was again relegated to the position of a provincial capital, albeit one of a particular importance. At the death of Shah Ismail the Uzbeks again took Herat and held it until Shah Hamasbri took it in 1528. The Persian king, Abbas was born in Herat, and in Safavid texts, Herat is referred to as Asami by Ladai Iran, meaning the greatest of the cities of Iran. In the 16th century, all future Safavid rulers, from Tom Asbai to Abbasai, were governors of Herat in their youth. By the early 18th century Herat was governed by various Hataki and Abdali Afghans. After Nader Shah's death in 1747, Ahmad Shah Durrani took possession of the city and became part of the Durrani Empire. In 1824, Herat became independent for several years when the Afghan Empire was split between the Durranis and Baraksais. The Persians invaded the city in 1838, but the British helped the Afghans in repelling them. In 1856, they invaded again, and briefly managed to retake the city, it led directly to the Anglo Persian War. In 1857, hostilities between the Persians and the British ended after the Treaty of Paris was signed, and the Persian troops withdrew from Herat. One of the greatest tragedies for the Afghans and Muslims was the British invasion of, and subsequent destruction of the Islamic Musala complex in Herat in 1885. The officially stated reason was to get a good line of sight for their artillery against Russian invaders who never came. This was but one small sidetrack in the Great Game, a century long conflict between the British Empire and the Russian Empire in 19th century. In the 1960s, engineers from the United States built Herat Airport which was used by the Soviet forces during the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan in the 1980s. Even before the Soviet invasion at the end of 1979, there was a substantial presence of Soviet advisors in the city with their families. 
Between March 10 and March 20, 1979, the Afghan army in Herat under the control of Commander Ismail Khan Mutiny. Thousands of protesters took to the streets against the Hulk communist regime's oppression led by new Muhammad Iraqi. The new rebels led by Khan managed to oust the communists and take control of the city for three days, with some protesters murdering any Soviet advisors. This shocked the government who blamed the new administration of Iran following the Iranian Revolution for influencing the uprising. Reprisals by the government followed, and between 3,000 and 24,000 people, according to different sources, were killed, in what is called the 1979 Herat Uprising, or in Persian as the Qiyami Herat. The city itself was recaptured with tanks and airborne forces, but at the cost of thousands of civilians killed. This massacre was the first of its kind since the country's independence in 1919 and was the bloodiest event preceding the Soviet-Afghan War. Herat received damage during the Soviet-Afghan War in the 1980s, especially its western side. The province as a whole was one of the worst hit. In April 1983, a series of Soviet bombings damaged half of the city and killed around 3,000 civilians, described as extremely heavy, brutal and prolonged. Ismail Khan was the leading Mujahideen commander in Herat fighting against the Soviet-backed government. After the communist government's collapse in 1992, Khan joined the new government and he became governor of Herat province. The city was relatively safe and it was recovering and rebuilding from the damage caused in the Soviet Afghan War. However, on September 5, 1995, the city was captured by the Taliban without much resistance, forcing Khan to flee. Herat became the first Persian speaking city to be captured by the Taliban. The Taliban's strict enforcement of laws confining women at home and closing girls' schools alienated heritists who are traditionally more liberal and educated, like the Kabulis, than other urban populations in the country. Two days of anti Taliban protests occurred in December 1996, which was violently dispersed and led to the imposition of a curfew. After the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan, on November 12, 2001, it was captured from the Taliban by forces loyal to the Northern Alliance and Ismail Khan returned to power, see Battle of Herat. In 2004, Mir Wai Sadiq, aviation minister of Afghanistan and the son of Ismail Khan, was ambushed and killed in Herat by a local rival group. More than 200 people were arrested under suspicion of involvement. In 2005, the International Security Assistance Force, ISAF, began establishing bases in and around the city. Its main mission was to train the Afghan National Security Forces, ANSF, and help with the rebuilding process of the country. Regional Command West, led by Italy, assisted the Afghan National Army, and a 207th Corps. Herat was one of the first seven areas that transitioned security responsibility from NATO to Afghanistan. In July 2011, the Afghan Security Forces assumed security responsibility from NATO. Due to their close relations, Iran began investing in the development of Herat's power, economy and education sectors. In the meantime, the United States built a consulate in Herat to help further strengthen its relations with Afghanistan. In addition to the usual services, the consulate works with the local officials on development projects and with security issues in the region. Herat has a cold semi-arid climate, Kupin Climate Classification BSK. Precipitation is very low and mostly falls in winter. Although Herat is approximately lower than Kandahar, the summer climate is more temperate, and the climate throughout the year is far from disagreeable, although winter temperatures are comparably lower. From May to September, the wind blows from the northwest with great force. The winter is tolerably mild, snow melts as it falls, and even on the mountains does not lie long. Three years out of four it does not freeze hard enough for the people to store ice. The eastern reaches of the Hari River including the rapids, are frozen hard in the winter, and people travel on it as on a road. India, Iran and Pakistan operate their consulate here for trade, military and political links. Of the more than dozen minarets that once stood in Herat, many have been toppled from war and neglect over the past century. Recently, however, everyday traffic threatens many of the remaining unique towers by shaking the very foundations they stand on. Cars and trucks that drive on a road encircling the ancient city rumble the ground every time they pass these historic structures. UNESCO personnel and Afghan authorities have been working to stabilize the fifth minaret. The population of Herat numbers approximately 436,300 as of 2013. It is a multi-ethnic society with Persian speakers as the majority. There is no current data on the precise ethnic makeover but according to a 2003 map found in the National Geographic magazine, 
Persian-speaking Tajiks and Farsiwan form the overwhelming majority of the city, comprising ca. 80%. Pashtuns, 10%, Hazaras, 2%, Uzbeks, 2%, and Turkmens, 1%, form sizable minorities. Persian is the native language of Herat and the local dialect, known by natives as Harati, belongs to the Khorasani cluster within Persian. It is akin to the Persian dialects of eastern Iran notably those of Mashhad and Khorasan province. It serves as the lingua franca of the city. The second language that is understood by many is Pashto, which is the native language of the Pashtuns. The local Pashto dialect spoken in Herat is a variant of Western Pashto, which is also spoken in Kandahar in southern and western Afghanistan. Religiously, Sunni Islam is practiced by the majority while Shias make up the minority. The city once had a Jewish community. About 280 families lived in Herat as of 1948 but most moved to Israel that year, and the community disappeared by 1992. There are four former synagogues in the city's old quarter, which were neglected but in the late 2000s renovated by the Aga Khan Trust for Culture, three of them turning into nurseries and schools. The Jewish cemetery is being taken care of by Jali Lamed Abdelaziz. Herat International Airport was built by engineers from the United States in the 1960s and was used by the Soviet Armed Forces during the Soviet-Afghan War in the 1980s. It was bombed in late 2001 during Operation Enduring Freedom but had been rebuilt within the next decade. The runway of the airport has been extended and upgraded and as of August 2014 there were regularly scheduled direct flights to Delhi, Dubai, Mashhad, and various airports in Afghanistan. At least five airlines operated regularly scheduled direct flights to Cabo. Rail connections to and from Herat were proposed many times, during the great game of the 19th century and again in the 1970s and 1980s, but nothing came to life. In February 2002, Iran and the Asian Development Bank announced funding for a railway connecting Torbati Haidariya in Iran to Herat. This was later changed to begin in Kaf in Iran, a railway for both cargo and passengers, with work on the Iranian side of the border starting in 2006. Construction is underway in the Afghan side and it was estimated to be completed by March 2018. There is also the prospect of an extension across Afghanistan to Sher Khan Bundar. The AH-76 highway connects Herat to Maimana and the north. The AH-77 connects it east towards Chacharan and north towards Mary and Turkmenistan. Highway 1, part of Asian Highway AH-1, links it to Mashhad and Iran to the northwest, and south via the Kandahar Herat Highway to Delhi. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.